Some of the largest snakes in the world actually make the best pet snakes in the world for some of us. So what if you want something huge in a tiny form? Today we're going over the top five massive species of snakes that come with a dwarf alternative. My name's Adam, this is Kratos. You're watching Wicked Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Just before we get carried away, I wanna make it abundantly clear. When I say they're the best species of snakes, I mean for a select few of us. If you have enough confidence and if you have enough experience, this isn't something to get taken lightly. Don't just go out and buy a berm. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying if you love these snakes and you're not ready for something this big, there are dwarf alternatives and we're going over the top five today. So let's just start it off with number five, BCCs and BCIs. Basically what I'm talking about is boa constrictors from Central and South America. So true boa constrictors, the red tails, the true red tails are gonna get big. Sometimes we've seen them up to 14 feet. Now it's much more common, you'll see them around 10 foot for females, males are smaller, but they are a big snake. Now, of course, you could get just a BCI, like a male boa constrictor emperator or boa emperator, they're called now. And a male is probably gonna top out around six, seven feet maybe, so you're safe. But if you want something even smaller than that, that does come in some morphs, get yourself a hog island boa. And that's because hog island boas are a type of dwarf boa. Now there's a bunch of different types of dwarf boas. Generally they're insular, which means that they come from islands because when you're on an island, you've got smaller prey a lot of the time because there's less area and therefore you're not gonna get as big because you don't have big animals to prey on. Now, if you don't want a hog island boa, you can get different species or different types, different locales is the word I'm actually looking for, of these smaller boas, of these dwarf boas, but they're really uncommon in comparison to the hog island, which is why I suggested that one. Now, a hog island boa might even top out at five feet if you get a male. Like we're talking these guys, sometimes even four and a half feet. So they are much smaller. Think ball python size, basically. Now anything that's a dwarf or any species can get bigger than what's on a care guide. We've all seen this spotted python, that six foot two, that was just kind of an outlier, right? That species usually gets to four feet. So just because you get a dwarf or just because you get a smaller species of snake, doesn't mean that they can't get a little bit bigger than what you read on a care guide. So enough beating this dead horse. If you want something that is small, but you want a boa, a hog island boa is generally easy to find. They come in a few different morphs and they're not that expensive. And they're pretty darn common. Number four. Burmese pythons. In my opinion, in terms of temperament, in terms of the best large snake, in my opinion, it's a berm, by far, without a close second at all. I think that Burmese pythons are amazing. They're the puppy dogs of the large snake world. But at the end of the day, this is a male and this is a 13 foot animal. And this is an animal that was not power fed. So these animals do get big, is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes you can get berms that get regularly over 15 feet. There are berms that go over 20 feet. It just depends. Females get bigger than males. How are they fed? In general care when they are growing up. But there's no way to get a healthy berm, regular berm, that's under 10 or 12 feet, even as a male. So that means that there's a dwarf berm, right? Well, yes, there are dwarf berms. The thing is, I don't think they're super common. That's why they're not closer to number one on the list. It's just because they're not super common, right? Retics are gonna be on the list, spoiler alert, and they have much more common dwarf and super dwarf varieties. Where dwarf berms, although there are guys like the Chuck Royals of the world who do breed them, they're just not as common. Now, one thing I'll say, if you are going after a dwarf variety of a huge snake, is make sure you know what you're getting. Don't buy it from Joe Schmo on Kijiji or Craigslist or whatever, who you don't trust. Because that guy could just be giving you a one-year-old berm and saying, oh, it's a dwarf, and then hiking up the price 400 bucks. I'm not saying this is common at all. I'm just saying be aware, it's always best to buy from a breeder, a trusted breeder who actually breeds these things, rather than, oh, I'm getting a super dwarf, and then you take it home and it turns into a 20-foot animal, and then next four years. You don't really want that. So berms, they do come in a dwarf variety, and we're talking these guys max out usually around six foot, although we have had reports of around eight foot two, but they generally top out around four to six feet. So we're talking about a really big ball python, which is pretty amazing because berms are awesome. 
They are absolutely gorgeous animals and it is so cool that you could have one if you're not ready for one by getting the dwarf variety. Because I think everyone should have the opportunity to handle one of these beautiful, beautiful beasts because they are one of my favorite species of snake. I absolutely love having the ability to work with them. But if you live in a tiny apartment and don't have tons of room for an eight foot by four foot enclosure, perhaps the dwarf variety is better for you. Number three anacondas. Now this is a weird one because they're actually different species. Now when we talk about green anacondas, we're talking about the largest snake on earth, the heaviest bodied snake anyway, on earth. These things get massive, over 300 pounds if you find these giant wild specimens that have been eating great for decades in the wild. That's not really that uncommon, but there are yellow anacondas. I don't think that either of them make great pets because yellow anacondas, although they're not gonna get 20 plus feet or 300 pounds and probably somewhere around 10 or 11 feet, it's still a big snake. It's still something that in my opinion, you should have a second person handling with you or in the room at least just in case. And yellow anacondas are known for being, what's that word that you guys like when I use? Cantankerous. They are quite cantankerous on average. So no, anacondas are not generally good reptiles to be kept as pets for most people, even the smaller variety. The reason that I put them higher than berms is finding yellow anacondas. You'll find them as water boas a lot of the time because classified ads don't like when you say anaconda. They're just way easier to find than dwarf berms. They're gonna be cheaper as well. And although that's not a good example, by the way, that's not a great reason to buy something because it's cheaper. Don't, don't do that ever. I'm just saying that it's much more common to find. It's easier and it's a different species altogether. So there's really no mistaking a green anaconda for a yellow anaconda. Number two, reticulated pythons. Now, if you watch awesome channels like Garrett's over at Reach Out Reptiles, you know about super dwarfs and dwarfs. So there are locales that are the dwarfs that get 10 or 12 feet, and then there's super dwarfs that top out usually around six feet. So it just depends, and there's mixes, matches, right? There's some that could be 87.5% super dwarf or 50% super dwarf, depending on the breeding and how they've been bred through the lines. And again, if you buy from someone like uh, Chuck Royal in Canada or Garrett Hartle in the US, you know what you're getting. I have full faith if they tell you you're getting a 75% or whatever the fraction is, whatever the percentage is of super dwarf, that is exactly what you're getting. But again, be careful if you're buying a classified ad or from someone you don't know, make sure you're not getting a mainland that's gonna get to 20 feet and you're just kind of not getting duped. You know what I mean? Now, Retex are amazing. They're very smart. They have a crazy food drive. All in all, I think they're amazing animals. I just prefer Burmese pythons. For whatever reason, to me, they seem a little bit more placid, probably not as bright, a little bit more dopey, but I'm okay with having a dopier snake that I can trust just a little bit more. There's nothing wrong with retics. They're not villains. It's just my personal opinion. Okay, so number one, I'm gonna have to stretch a little bit. You probably didn't see this coming. Scrub pythons. Now, scrub pythons don't have a dwarf alternative. Sort of. Scrub pythons can get huge, and usually it's the Australian variety, the Australian locale, that are going to get the biggest. Those are the most uncommon, they're the most expensive, so if you get some that are from Papua New Guinea, that area of the world, they do come a little bit smaller. But regardless, if you want something smaller than a scrub python that is kind of similar with the arboreal behavior, and you want it to be in the same genus, then a Boland's python would probably be great unless you haven't won a lottery recently, in which case you probably can't afford one because bull and pythons are really expensive, but I wanted to keep it as close to form as possible. Now, if you looked at a bull and python, it's pretty obvious why you'd want one. They are very sought after, they are very beautiful, but let's just kind of bring it back to reality for people like you and I who don't have tons of money to blow on snakes. Like bull and pythons are like $7,000 sometimes. They're really expensive. So although not in the same genus, I would say carpet pythons are probably the closest thing that are a reasonable price, reasonable to take care of, reasonable to get, not gonna try to bite you all the time if you get a well-socialized one, and there's different varieties. If you want something that is big, get a coastal. They're nine feet, still way smaller than a scrub python, still will exhibit arboreal behavior, or if you want something smaller, get an Erian Jaya. So I'm kind of stretching on that one. I couldn't think of another massive snake that comes with a true to the species dwarf version. I don't think there's really one that exists. So that's what I would say. If you want something that's similar then a carpet python would probably be your best option, especially if you're not rich because 
I can't afford Bolin's pythons either, sorry. And there you go, that's it. I've had enough of trying to wrangle this uh, 13 foot snake. So if you liked the video, please hit subscribe, hit like, hit the bell notification or whatever with your python tail. And what do you think? Is there something that you keep? Is there something I should have put on the list? Something that didn't fit? Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. You guys got to see Kratos months before we showed him to the channel. I'm gonna be showing the enclosure that is custom built just for Kratos on the channel very soon too. And for as little as a dollar a month, you get all that discounts on the merch, extra content, all that sort of thing. And I think that's it. Because we do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.